So the other day, I done a video about Alexander Usyk and asked the question, if Alexander Usyk beats Tyson Fury to become two-time undisputed in 23 fights and then retires, where does he sit in like the all-time list of heavyweights and greats, etc, etc. And long story short, I came to a summary, in my own personal opinion, that Alexander Usyk, while he's great and while he should rank up there with all the biggest names in the world, he didn't have the outside the ring profile, so he would be probably compared more to the likes of Larry Holmes and guys like that, legends like that, than guys like Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, etc, etc. And that's just my opinion, of course, you're more than welcome to your own. And if you haven't seen the video, you can go check it out and I'll go into a little bit more detail there. That's basically the summary that I came up with. And I thought to myself, let's flip that coin let's ask the same question for Tyson Fury. So the question I'm asking for Tyson Fury is if he beats Alexander Usyk and retires after having basically won all the belts available to him and become undisputed and retire undefeated, is that enough to put him up there with the greats or at least be mentioned alongside them in the conversation, even though if he doesn't like make it right to the very top or whatever, does he get him into the top 10 all time or whatever? I think a lot of people's reaction to that question instantly is going to be, no, what are you talking about? He's not that good, etc, etc. And you know what? I suppose people have got a point to an extent anyway. His style isn't that pleasing to the eye. Not his most recent style anyway. He looks a bit sloppy, he looks a bit lazy, and he doesn't look very good, to be honest with you guys. But that being said, right, let's be fair now, people. I know a lot of people out there don't like Tyson Fury, and I understand he, he's not very likable at times. Let's put it that way. But if he comes into the heavyweight division, right, and he wins every single belt along the way, he beats Vladimir Klitschko, frees up the division from the hold that he had on it. He's basically the reason why we had this five-year run. I guarantee if Klitschko was still active, people would still be in line for their mandatory shots because it wasn't easy to get a shot against Klitschko. So he kind of cleared the heavyweight division of that burden. He took the torch from Vladimir Klitschko, effectively ending his reign, ending his career to an extent. And then he ran with it. Obviously, he had his little hiccup, the outside of the ring stuff, which I'm going to get back to because that kind of adds to his legacy as well. So he went on his little downward spiral. He was zero, nothing, had no belts, came back, had that trilogy with Deontay Wilder, legendary trilogy. And people are going to say regarding that one, well, oh, Deontay Wilder was never that good or Tyson Fury wasn't that good and it was a low-level fight, except whatever. What about Gatti Ward? How many of them were elite fighters? They weren't. People still remember that. A good fight's a good fight. So that trilogy was still legendary, regardless of what level it was fought at. And then on top of that, if he goes on to beat Alexander Usyk, become undisputed, there's almost nothing left he can do. And I appreciate that on a personal level, whatever, people don't like the guy. And no matter what he achieves, they're always going to find a reason to dislike him or whatever. But literally, if he takes the torch from Vladimir Klitschko, runs through this division, clears out everyone apart from Anthony Joshua and then retires undefeated, there's literally nothing else he could do other than maybe fight Anthony Joshua as well. But once he beats, or if he beats Alexander Usyk, that Anthony Joshua fight kind of goes out the window. Now you guys are going to say, oh, why are you using the whole triangle theory thing or whatever? I'm not really, I don't really care about that, but let's be honest, ever since Anthony Joshua beat Otto Wallin, everyone's been saying, oh, we've done a better job on Otto Wallin than Tyson Fury did, and now people are saying, well, he's going to do a better job on France Ngannou than Tyson Fury did. And they're trying to use that as a reason to say Anthony Joshua is still in the conversation. But that doesn't really wash me when it comes to the Alexander Usyk situation and undisputed situation with Tyson Fury. Alexander Usyk soundly beat Anthony Joshua twice. If Tyson Fury goes in there and just ices Alexander Usyk, then it kind of diminishes the AJ Fury fight, in my opinion at least anyway. And you guys, I say, you may or may not agree, but who out there is calling for Joe Joyce versus Tyson Fury? If Tyson Fury beats Alexander Usyk, convincingly or whatever who out there is going to say hold, hold on a second you need to beat joe joyce as well otherwise it don't count no one you know because joe joyce got soundly whooped to zhang two times and it's done if anything people would call for the zhang fight but in this situation alexander Usyk is the zhang if you know what i mean so there'll be no need for anti joshua versus tyson fury other than for it to be a spectacle event but in terms of tyson fury to actually prove something if he does beat alexander Usyk, there's gonna be no need for it so on the boxing side he would have ticked off everything in my opinion uh, winning all the belts taking the torch maintaining the torch and beating the guy that people said he didn't want to fight he was scared of and on top of that he's got the highlight real flashback moments that you can put into a reel now and then 20 years later some kid who's just getting into boxing will watch and be amazed by and i'm talking about things like i don't know even though this isn't too impressive to me it'll look good on a highlight reel like the thing where he's on the ropes against um tom schwartz and he's doing that old muhammad ali thing that will go down well the deontay wilder knockdown and undertaker thing that will go down well his outside the ring antics that will age well even though right now People don't really like him for it. At the time, people didn't really like Muhammad Ali for it either. But 
over time that narrative kind of changed and he grew into legendary status this is a matter of fact and i suspect there'll be a hint of that with tyson fury in his legacy like his outside the ring antics some of the clips from i don't know his press conferences you know him coming as batman or whatever you could put a compilation together today put it in a time vault or whatever release it in 20 years and people are going to be interested in that content people will watch and there's a reason they'll watch because it's kind of entertaining we're a bit sick of it now because we're living it i'm telling you in 20 years time someone new to boxing they're going to look at tyson fury and his antics in a similar way to the way we did when it comes to guys like muhammad ali back in the day and i think the only modern day criticism of tyson fury that will probably stand true even though i don't necessarily agree with myself but i think there is a point there is the fact that his body of work isn't that great in terms of he has the big fights like he's got the Wilder, the Klitschko and he will have the Alexander Usyk on there but there's too many other guys like the Tom Schwartz, the Otto Wallins, Pianetas, Hammers, Derek Chisora, you know the B-level oppositions like there's too many of them on there but that being said if he was to fight Alexander Usyk and beat Alexander Usyk then the three major wins on his resume would be Vladimir Klitschko, Alexander Usyk and Deontay Wilder and that's not shabby, that's not shabby at all and I think you would struggle to find a heavyweight with three better wins on his resume than them three regardless of the rest so in my opinion I think Tyson Fury long term he will probably be seen as more favourable like when people look back than someone like Alexander Usyk in terms of that people will be under the impression that he was more entertaining and to be honest with you outside of the ring he kind of is inside the ring it's questionable and I have to be honest with you guys me personally i'm done with his outside the ring stuff like all the games and all the same insults it doesn't really work for me anymore but i do think that in hindsight 20 30 years down the line they're going to be people watching them press conferences and they're going to be in awe of what he's doing or what he was doing they're going to put him in a higher place because of it so i think he'll be remembered fondly by newcomers who look back at the sport and they're going to put him in a higher regard i personally think that his achievements can't really be topped by him at the minute like there's not much else he could do if he wins the Alexander Usyk fight then what else can Tyson Fury do to prove himself as a professional boxer at that point all he can do is hang around and keep fighting mandatories or have the AJ fight or whatever but in terms of achievements in his career he would have essentially clocked boxing and if that's not enough for you as a boxing fan to put him up in some lists high up in some lists or even the bottom part of some list of all times or whatever I think that's a little bit unfair because essentially he can't really do anything else he's beaten the main guys of his era He's retired undefeated and undisputed and for me personally I think maybe that will put him in like top 10 heavyweights of all time maybe towards the end of it like 9 or 10 but for me if you can't justify putting him in that sort of position after his career after him clearing out everyone becoming undisputed winning every belt along the way having two years out having a drug addiction coming back from zero working his way all the way up to the top if that's not worth a top 10 spot in your personal list or whatever then maybe you just got something against the guy that's all i got for this one guys like comment share subscribe or don't i'll catch you on the next one love